So you call it Broadford Bridge in West Sussex. They were drilling Kimmeridge limestone, so-called limestone. Now the Kimmeridge clay formation is well known throughout the south of England and indeed the North Sea as a source rock for oil and gas. But the new phase of exploration means that they're using the Kimmeridge clay formation directly as a reservoir. But because it's a tight rock, that means it's very hard to get liquids to flow through it. You need to stimulate it. And this is a technical, or a technical word meaning either hydraulic fracturing, fracking, or uh, dissolving bits of it away uh, with strong acid. But one of the tricks that the industry currently employs is avoiding at all costs mentioning the word shale. So they've honed in on the idea of referring only to the so-called limestones, of which there are about two or three layers, within this very thick Kimmeridge clay formation. But this is not true. The best so-called limestone, as shown in one of the, the geological log for horse hill number one, this is the well drilled at Horse Hill near Gatwick, shown here the, the uh, you can't call it the Kimmeridge clay limestone number two, this one here. This corresponds to this cliff face as seen in Kimmeridge Bay in Dorset. Now there's no limestone there. This is all, if you look at the small print, it's all mudstones and shales with a few whiter bands here, which are not limestone, they're sandstone. The only hint uh, which leads, misleadingly, the company that you call to call the limestone is, the, is that the mudstone is slightly calcareous, which means it's more easily fractured and it does have small content of carbonate. So they're using this trick, they say we're drilling limestone in the wheel, we're not drilling shale at all. But the truth is, even when they drill their so-called limestone, which is which should really be called a micrite, they're drilling stuff like this. This is not a limestone by any stretch of the imagination. I've covered some of this. Yeah, the, the target uh, is a tight formation. We can trace it all the way from Kimberley's Bay through to the wheel, and it doesn't change. Those layers and their thicknesses are all very much the same. The, these micrites are up to 30 meters thick, and the BGS has mapped them and can identify them, the map them as green lines here. They call them micrite, these layers. You can correlate from one well to the next, just directly or else via seismic lines to fill the gap. So within the thick Kimmeridge clay formation, the BGS identifies three at most of these micrite layers, which UCOG is wrongly calling a limestone. <coughs> UCOG is now seeing five limestone layers, not just three. Again, this is rather unusual. So at Broadford Bridge, they took over a license formerly held by Celtic Energy. Celtic had planning permission from West Sussex County Council to drill a structure here. This is a sandstone structure, and you can map it with contours. This is down at two or three kilometers depth below the surface, just like the contours of the hillsides of you know, an, or, an Ordnance Survey map. They call this the Willow Prospect. We call them Prospect before you've discovered anything. So Celtic had permission to drill here, going vertically down into this prospect, but they never carried it out. They passed on their license or sold it to Yukon. But Yukon didn't drill as per the license, the planning permission specifically granted for drilling down to here via a hole going like that from the Broadford Bridge drill pad. They went off at an angle, much shallower, and at a completely different azimuth going to the northeast instead of the northwest. And then they ended up in all sorts of problems, mainly because they drilled at a very shallow angle through a difficult set of rocks here we call them perfect limestones. But, so they were trying to go for the Kimmeridge clay over here. Now this was illegal because they did not have planning permission for this. The West Sussex planning permission was only to drill to this. So they just did it anyway and they seemed to get away with it. Furthermore, I understand that they have acid, they have acidized the well 
to try and get flow moving, and this acidization was not an approved thing to do. So they ended up at Broadford Bridge, first of all with four limestones in their first well, going down like this to the north, Broadford Bridge number one. They had all sorts of problems up here. Uh, the, the well was getting washed out, this means when you're drilling through it, um, it doesn't just re remain at its eight and a half inches or six inches diameter, it all crumbles away. So you have to then pump down loads of concrete or cement to fill the gap and then you drill through that and you carry on. It's called a washout. So, so they did that because they're technically incompetent and they shouldn't have been drilling through uh, the perfect limestones. First of all, at the first well in black, they identified four so-called limestones, these micrites. So the bottom one here, uh, you could say by reading the well logs, there is a hint of something there. So let's give them that. This is an accurate plan I've drawn up with the tops and bases of each well accurate to within a foot or two. I don't have the details of the exact depths of the four so-called limestones, so I've done, I've used by scaling it to there, to there, uh, a nearby well called Wyman number one to make a match. And what I think has happened through their incompetence is they drilled the first well and they found four of these micrites. Then they drilled, they had to deviate and bypass the problem zone and drill <coughs> Broadford Bridge 1Z, a soundtrack well we call that. And then they said, oh, we found five uh, so-called limestones. Well, I think what they've done here, the geometric explanation for it is they went through a fault zone and they hit the KL number four twice. So what they call KL5, the top one, counting from the bottom upwards, is actually just KL4 repeated because they went through a fault. Now they don't understand all this. Uh, they've shut it all down. The well is suspended. That means it's in suspended animation. Um, so they don't know what they're going to do with it. So that's UCOG at Broadford Bridge. Now we come on a bit nearer home to what they're doing at Horse Hill. Before they drilled Horse Hill, they produced a complicated uh, geological structure map. This is based on the control, the seismic data, now shown in green lines, up and down the place and across. There's an old well here drilled at Colondine Farm, Colondine Farm number one, drilled by Esso in 1964, a vertical well. Then, more recently, they drilled at Horse Hill. But this was their prediction of the structure before they drilled. There's a lot of things wrong with this structure, just geometrically. It doesn't make sense uh, geologically, all these complicated faults uh, running across the place, across the way. I know this is a highly technical diagram. I'll try and simplify it. This is what they predicted the structure would be at Horse Hill. So the Horse Hill well was planned to go from here and be deviated to the northwest towards their version of the Colindine Farm Fault, which I've shown in purple here, so sort of separating two halves of the structure. These contours are the structure on the top of the Portland Sandstone, which is a conventional reservoir, but it gives you an indication of the kind of structure they were going for. Now, by analysing so sort of forensically in detail from one side of the fault to the other, and reading off the values of the contours, <coughs> here is the displacement shown from these contours of one side dropping down relative to the other. So over here, there's an 80-foot drop from the north side to the south side. Here it goes to 100 feet, here to 60, then 20. Then it reverses and goes, the dropping down side is to the north here, and then back down to drop into the south. This is over a whole uh, long fault, which should always be down thrown to the north. So this diagram is a complete mess, not least of which their location for the Covington Farm fault, their Covington Farm number one well, is 150 metres north of where it should be in a field and I've been to this field and I've talked to locals and where Esso put it in 1961 
and gave us the national grid coordinates. That is quite correct. UCOL can't even get that right. They situated it in a stream, 150 meters to the northwest. And I've looked back at the historical OS maps, going back 100 years, and that stream has always been there and it has never been altered. So this is the kind of incompetence we're dealing with. They can't even position a well correctly on their maps. And they're producing a geometrically impossible structure. If this was a sort of honors level uh, final exam, you know, make a map of this structure, this would fail outright. You know, an undergraduate level. So after the well was drilled, they realized there were some problems. This was after they drilled Hogsfield 1. So they tried to bodge it up by keeping the same fault, but they swapped over the downside of the fault, that's the side that goes lower, shown by the teeth. They swapped it over from there to there. This was a kind of bodge up to try and sort out the problems after the, the results from horse hill number one came in. Now again, this is geological nonsense, having a, having a fault like that swapping its sense of displacement. Just does, it does happen in certain parts of the world, but certainly not in Surrey. Whereas I've remapped this independently, and there are two separate faults. This explains the whole story quite sensibly. There's a separate Colindine Farm fault running up to the north, and it's completely separate from what I call the Horse Hill fault, running down here, very near to the well. So my geological interpretation of this, using a fancy uh, exploration computer program, it costs about 12,000 quid, by the way, uh, is you can then map the surfaces. This is a, an approximate plane dipping north, that's the Colindine Farm Fault. And this is a completely separate structure from the Horse Hill Fault, which is a separate fault dying out just at about the well. And then we'll come on to this later, uh, the fault triggering all the earthquakes, which are shown uh, in by the red dots. So my prediction, which I made two years ago in a blog article, was that UCOG had drilled into a fault zone. And here's a, uh, a sort of textbook diagram of what they've done. We're looking west now. And the Horse Hill Fault, sloping or dipping slightly to the north, it, on either side of it has a 50 or 100 meter wide damage zone. This is where the rock is all crushed up next to where the fault has actually moved. And I predicted two years ago, I said I didn't know at the time, I said, I bet you they drilled very near the Horse Hill Fault. And that accounts from the high uh, oil flow that they got, the so-called Gatwick Gusher discovery. Now, UCOG have since admitted that they've drilled into the fault zone, so they're coming some way towards uh, what I predicted correctly a few years ago. I said that, would, that the very high oil flow of the so-called Gusher was because they had drilled into the fault zone, but this would be of short duration. Now, the recent flow tests of this well, starting last, uh, last autumn, start up quite high, ne nearly 800 barrels a day, which is not bad, down to zero. But the flow tests are dying off. This is not a sign of a long-lived new discovery, you know, an orthodox oil field. This is typical of something in a fault zone, where a lot of oil will come out very quickly because of all the fracturing. But it's not a long-term discovery, and it's certainly not something that you can extrapolate from this very unusual configuration here to the whole of the wheel, like UCOG and Angus Energy are implying that we've got this great North Sea waiting to be exploited. So this is, yeah, in effect, said all, all of this. Um, the reason for the stupid contouring is that it was done automatically by a computer without anyone sort of thinking to correct it or adjust it. Now, the production plans, we come on now to what they plan to do in the future. Now they've done Horse Hill 1 and they're testing it both at the Portland level and deeper on at the Kimmeridge level through the fault zone. 
What they're proposing is the first of what they hope will be a whole series of drill pads. And uh, three years ago, they produced this diagram in one of their glossy brochures of several drill pads, each one of which had a number of wells extending down into geology down here. Now, this diagram, I've, I found where it came from. It's from uh, the Jonah gas field in Wyoming. It's nothing like UK geology. And in the Jonah gas field, there are lenses of sandstone, which are tight. This means they've got to be fracked. So this is a diagram of fracking through what looks like a set of overlapping pancakes. These are the sandstone lenses, which are, have been drilled and are being produced at the Jonah gas field in Wyoming. So I pointed this out, and then you kind of since changed the tune a year later, they're now talking about wells from the horse hill pad either being slanty like this, or down and then horizontal along the Kimmeridge Mikrites, like so. So it's as if they got the geology just off the internet. Oh, this will do for a diagram. This is what we're going to do. This is not serious geological uh, analysis at all, in my view. And their latest application, we come on to the nitty gritty now, what they have applied to Surrey County Council for permission to do going into production is, first of all, going from their existing horse hill number one well, which they now admit, admitted went into the fault zone. Notice here there's a fault on the side of this block diagram here, and there's one here. There's no fault shown there. So if we look at that diagram from on top, what they're now saying is they have, in effect, a separate fault up here from what I call the horse hill fault down here. The old picture of a curvy fault coming down at that, they must now admit is invalid. So although they won't admit it, I think they're now accepting that my predictions and my geology is much nearer to the truth than theirs. So in my view, UCOR needs to do a lot more homework and present to Surrey County Council some real adult detailed maps of what they think is going on around the wholesale site, geologically speaking. Because what they're planning to do is drill a whole series of wells, down, sideways, you name it, they're going in all directions, all from the one pad. And if you think about it, if we've had the possible problem with the earthquake so far, think what this is going to do. Furthermore, think if there are other pads with them doing the same thing, if they get away with it. Think of the problems that might arise there. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to say, they've even and they've even identified a two metre thick Kimberley limestone number zero. So they've now have six of these things piled one on top of the other. It's mostly just their imagination. Compare their little nicely drawn, coloured up block diagrams, so there's no detail, no proper scales on them and so on, with what is required in the US. This is what we call a well plat. For every well drilled in the US, they have to provide an exact plan of where they're going to go, starting here, down and curving, and then along in this direction. It's all measured to within the nearest foot and by a surveyor. This is before they're allowed to drill anything. So in the land of the free, where there's little regulation, blah, 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 but in Pennsylvania, uh, Colorado, and Texas, they all have to do this kind of stuff before they're allowed to do any drilling. Whereas it looks like UCOG thinks it can get away with just providing some nice fancy coloured diagrams. Furthermore, they plan to develop drilling diagonally and horizontally in one sector to the northwest here. There's the existing holes as well. And also to the south and east in this other sector with the diagonal shading. But this is wrong because one of their wells goes due south and then turns right. So by their own plans, they're already drilling outside what they're requesting as a permitted development area. So they can't get the geometry right even within, on their own terms and within this limited little area. Up at the top you can see here in more detail the structures, the slope of the horse hill 
fault running along uh, and dying out just next to the wholesale well, and the Collagene Farm fault is separate over here. That's my interpretation. 